Welcome to another episode of the Mac and Fish Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Roland Smith of Miami Central High School. The Rockets are looking for their seventh state championship. Welcome to the Mac and Fish Podcast. We have a very special guest today, uh, Roland Smith of Miami Central High School. Uh, today, we're going to be featuring him as one of not only the top coaches in the country, but also uh, in Dade County. He's been one of the top coaches for at least the past decade. Uh, we look forward to speaking with uh, Roland today. How are you doing, Roland? I'm doing good. Uh, Fish, how are you doing? Good, man. Doing good. We're also here with our co-host, Corey Long. Uh, Corey Long has worked for ESPN. He works for uh, some other papers, works for the Lightning, writes for them as well. How you doing, Corey? I'm doing great. Doing great. Excited for the uh, state championship week. Glad we got here. Well, this is not anything new to uh, Coach Roland Smith. He's been in multiple state championships, not only at uh, Miami Central, but Miami Northwestern as well. So this is something that he's used to every year, and hopefully it doesn't ever get old for Roland. But how you doing, Roland? I'm doing good, um, Fish. Um, it's never get old for me. You know, anytime you get a chance to um, go to the state championship and represent your county, your area you're from, your school, your community, and for these kids and my coaching staff, it's always a wonderful feeling. I'm excited to get back at it. And, you know, we go up there for one reason and one reason only, and that's to try to win it, you know, uh, and represent Dade County. You know, Coach Roll, Roland, um, you know, this year's been different, not your typical year. You guys, I think we, in the regular season, I think you played 1.2 and a half games. I don't even think you played a game and a half. Uh, you know, and then you had a, a abbreviated season, season because of COVID-19. Then you also now go into the playoffs. Um, tell us a little bit about, like, what this season's been about, like. Oh, this season has been unusual as usual. It wasn't a usual year. Um, boy, it was crazy. Um, you know, we had a decision to make at the beginning of the season whether we was going to opt in or opt out. I met with my coaching staff. I met with my administrative people. I met with my kids. And um, they wanted to opt in. You know, it, it was a risk-taking move that we decided to opt in because, you know, we started the season late because of the COVID-19 situation. And um, it was spiked down here real bad. And the teams up north was able to start on time and play their regular games. And the teams that opt out down here in Dade County, they was able to play for a Tri-County Championship, and it was guaranteed to have eight to ten games. But you're right, uh, we started week one. Uh, we lost to Miami um, Northwest and Miami Mata, um, you know, by a touchdown. Um, we had to play some young guys, um, and, uh, you know, no excuses. They beat us, you know. Um, but um, And then after that, we had to play Edison. We played them um, for half. It was up 14 nothing, and didn't get a chance to finish that game because of the rain. We got lightning out, rained out, and we couldn't finish. And then we were supposed to play a play-in game the next week, and we got uh, – they had a COVID uh, breakout, so they, they forfeited the game. And then um, the week after that, we were supposed to play our first round against Archbishop McCartney, and, and they forfeited the, that game. So during that time, I was trying to play some other schools. I called my, my, my good friend, Damian Jones, tried to get a game with him. He felt like it was too soon. Like I told him, I said, I just want to do some work. It was supposed to play in true prep. Um, we had the, the game to play. was supposed to play on a Friday. Um, and we didn't get a chance to play it because they say we had to play the game on either Thursday or Saturday. And I wanted to play it that Thursday. And we wasn't going to play it. They didn't want to play us in a full game. They told us we'll play a half a game. And then the second half, we'll probably play a situation of scrimmage with 707, in red zone, inside run, one-on-one, -on -one, those type of things, just to get some work. So um, I had to... Um, get my coaches together, and we had to go ahead and, and schedule a scrimmage, an inter squad scrimmage on that Saturday against ourselves just to get uh, the game ready because um, I had a new quarterback, you know, some young guys off the line. I only had two returning starters on the line, so we just had to get our chemistry together. And I thought myself and my coaching staff did a tremendous job of getting these guys ready to go for the postseason um, with our first game we played against Lee. Well, you know, you got to overcome a lot so far, and you, you guys are back in the state championship. Central's won six of those state titles. Before you got to Miami Central, they had great teams. You know, they had teams that got very close, but they never really accomplished, accomplished that state title. Why have you had so much success there? Um, I think um, myself and my coaching staff, you know, I've, I've surrounded myself with some great guys. Um, I had a, a, a 
a pretty good core that was with me for a minute. But um, did I have guys to leave? Yes. I had Max Edwards, who won a state championship with me, who's now the head coach at um, my Northwestern. I had Gerald Cox, who was my um, – he was the back coach and head JV coach, who's now the head coach at Booker T. Washington. Yes, I had Jerry Gibson, who's now the head coach at Miami Killian. You know, so I had some coaches to leave, but I was able to uh, replace them with some good assistant coaches that – and it kept my foundation together pretty much. That's why – and, and the culture stayed the same. That's why it pretty much stayed the same as far as winning, you know. When you have a women winning formula and you have a great coaching staff with you, uh, you know, and, and, and we stick with our system, uh, we, 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 we it breeds success. Well, you know, Coach, you, we, you talked a little bit about your alma mater, Miami Northwestern. You were part of some tremendous teams there. You know, uh, you know, some of the best talent that's ever come through Dade County, that's come through the state of Florida, that's come through the college system, has come through the NFL. We're all on some of those Northwestern teams. Do you, do you feel like your experiences at Northwestern help better help, you know, help you better help you prepare better for the success that you've had at Central? Most definitely. It did. Um, you know, get getting a chance to work with those elite athletes over there and, and um and making sure that uh, you know, going through those situations prepare me for this opportunity that I have at Miami Central. But I always told guys, I said, man, you know, we played Central year in and year out. There was always in our district. And I told Billy Rowe when he became the head coach over there, I said, Coach, Central have just as much talent as Northwestern. They just need the right guy over there to, to keep that program going and get them in the right direction. And when I didn't take the job, and Coach Lockett, who was my offensive coordinator, took the job with North University of Miami, did a tremendous job. And he took a lot of my guys who was with me at Miami Northwestern with him, and they pretty much kept the same formula that we did at Northwestern. And um, the one thing they did, they called me, they asked me questions, you know, you know about certain things. I, I can recall when it wasn't a Nike school and, and um, the things that they were trying to do to become a Nike school. Now we wanted the elite Nike schools out there, you know, with some of the top programs in the country. So, I mean, so we've been doing a tremendous job when we're there. And um, my, my goal is to maintain that and keep that going because, um, you know, every year our goal don't change at Miami Central. That's to win a national championship and win a state championship. <laughs> you know, Coach, you, you, you've been to the state title game. You're going once again. You've had the one common theme among your teams is you've had a great rushing attack. Uh, you've had guys, Dalvin Cook, Joseph Yerby, Amari Daniels is the, the next one in line. Uh, we know how special Dalvin Cook's been and how good Yerby was, not only in high school, uh, and an injury caused him not to have a, you know, ha caused him not to have the career he wanted. You know, how good is Amari Daniels? He's just as good as those guys. You know, um, I think what slowed him down a little bit, you know, the pandemic, you know, by him not getting a chance to work out. You know, getting shaped like he, he normally would have. He would have had the whole spring and the off season. Um, he would have been even that much better. But uh, you can see as we get farther along in the playoff, he's starting to pick it up and he's starting to get in the groove to being that the Mario Daniels that he's going that he that he um, to fill his fulfill his potential. You know, um, I think you know uh, with the um, COVID, you know, a lot of the kids came out of, came in camp out of shape. You know, and that's and that's to be expected because of the you know you can't work out, you can't go into gyms and all that and do the things. And kids work out, but they don't work out as hard as they were if it was with the high school coaches. So, so um, that's always a different workout from working with the high school coaches because we know how to push them. You know, we're going to push them to the limit that they won't push themselves to. You know, so that kind of hurt him this year at the beginning of the season. But you know, he's up right up there with those guys. He had just as many offers, or or not too far from Dalvin. But Dalvin was a special kid, and Joseph was a special kid. And not only were they special talents, and those kids were just great persons, man. I mean, that's why. They had the success they had, you know, when they was in high school and the success they had when they was in college. And that's why Dalvin's having success he's having in the pro right now. Yeah. Coach, I'm going to follow that question up. You know, you know, a couple of years ago I was at practice. I watched, Dan, you know, Amari Daniels. At, I think it was, he was either a freshman or sophomore. I remember one of your coaches called out a linebacker and he said, hey, listen, we're going to – Daniel's going to come at you, block you. I mean, he basically told the linebacker what he was going to do. And then he turned to Daniels and said, hey, do your thing. That's what I overheard him say. It was one of the hardest blocks I've ever seen in a practice. I mean, Amari just laid this kid out. Uh, how fit, how physical and punishing of a back is Amari? I mean, you may not think he's a physical back because he's not as big as stature. He's not one of those guys that's, oh, that's going to you know, wild you with his side, but he's got thick legs. He's very powerfully built. But he's a strong runner. You know, he's always been a hard runner, you know, since he was a ninth grader. You know, he's hard to tackle. He never goes, pretty much never goes backwards. He always falls forward. 
and he always uh, pushes for more yards. So he's one of the most physical runner, not just fastest runner, but physical runner with that fat, with that speed that I've ever coached. And I coached some great ones. Well, now, coach, you're you're back. You're back in the in the state championship game where you know it seems like it seems like it's a there's a spot reserved for you every year. Um, given everything you've went through this year, how much how much how rewarding is would winning a state title mean for you, given in the current environment? Oh man, I mean, if we are able to go to Tallahassee and win a state championship. It probably, I would probably have to put that up there to one of the best um, accomplishments that we had to do as a coaching staff because with very little time with our kids and, and, and to be able to go in the weight room like we normally would have because you know, there was so much that we had to do as far as cleaning and making sure we stand sanitized, this would have to be probably one of the best ones I'll probably enjoy because of what we had to go through. So uh, we got to accomplish it first, but um, I think I would enjoy it just like it was my first one because that first one was really special for, to me too as well. Hey, you know, Coach, we you're you're one of the best coaches to ever come through Dade County. I mean, you know, your name is right up there with Walt Frazier, and, you know, guys like Don Solinger and and, and B- obviously Billy Rose, someone that was very important to you in your life. And you know, I would go as far, you know, you're right there with those guys. I, I live in the Tampa Bay area, and trust me, you've tortured many a tremendous Tampa Bay area team during your tenure at Central. So they would, they all here would say you were the greatest ever coach. But at, at some point, you know, when you look at everything that you've done at Central, all the titles that you won, do you are you are you are you are you happy where you are? Do you start thinking about? Maybe I want to try things out in college. Maybe, you know, go, go, maybe take an assistant job at college. I know you've probably had offers before. What, what really keeps you, what keeps you grounded? What keeps you motivated to continue to do what you're doing at Central? The kids, the community, um, you know, will I want to be, do, have an opportunity to go to collegiate level? You know, if, if that comes, the right situation comes, if it's what God wants me to do, I would probably look into it. But um, I'm happy where I'm at right now. I have a great administrative staff that give me the support that I need to be successful. A great principal, a great AD, you know, and, and, and the community is, is wonderful, man. So that's why I haven't left yet, but um, it would take a great uh, situation for me to move. But um, as long as um, I'm happy and they treat me right and, and um, I've still got a competitive edge like I do year in and year out, I'm going to be a, a rocket until, you know, something else come up that's better than what I'm doing right now. So I'm just happy and thankful for Gregory Bethune for giving me the opportunity to um, – coach after I was out out of coaching for six years when I took that time off to spend some time with my son and, and be a father to him, you know, and I've been there ever since. So I just want to thank him for that. Well, coach, man, we were, we're very happy to have you on. You know, I've always, you know, since I've been in this business, the first time I walked into your school, you always accepted me as, you know, one of the guys. And I always appreciate that because, you know, I was a, an outsider, you know, not being in the football community as far as a coach. I remember coming in, You've always accepted me and, and been very helpful for my career, and I always appreciate that. You're, you've also been a great friend. We've we've done camps together. We've been around together, and 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 I wouldn't be a re- I wouldn't be in the position I am right now if it wasn't for people like you. And I've always you know would like to thank you and appreciate that. But I, I'm glad you came on, and and I look forward to you guys bringing back another state championship to back down to Day County where it belongs. And you know, good luck this week and. Um, you know, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, uh, Fish. Um, uh, the thing I want to do and my staff want to do, since we're the only public school in Dade County going to represent South Florida, um, they, not South Florida, but Dade County, uh, we're going to go up there and give it a ballot effort to try to bring this thing back because it's not just for Miami City, but it's for the whole community, all of the Liberty City and all of Dade County. I was uh, rooting for Palmetto to go with us as well. But, um, you know, hey, we, we'll, we'll carry the city on our back. So thank you for having me. Thanks, Coach. I uh, I was uh, covering the Bucks game today, so I got a chance to see one of your one of your favorites. Did it got the first one hundred yard game against the Bucks this season? I actually ran. I thought he ran exceptionally well, and he's he's great. You know, doing uh, media stuff afterwards. He's he's great. He's fun. He's just he's always positive. I was really happy to catch up with Dalvin for a few minutes, even if through Zoom, just to just to you know, he seems real happy. Well, I have two of my guys that played in that game today. I had Devontae right, David, Devontae David, who played, for, the who played for, the, for Northwestern, who played with me at Northwestern, won a state championship with me over there at Northwestern. So I'm proud of both of those young men 
and you couldn't have uh, any uh, finer young man than those two young men. I'm happy for all the success that they have in the NFL, and they deserve it. And they're good human beings, not just good football players, but they're great human beings. That's what I like about those two young men. Yep. One of the last things we do on this podcast all the time is we ask, I don't know if you're too much of a tech guy, so one of the things is I, I hate to ask it. This may be the toughest question we throw at you all day, but um, is there any way people could follow you guys? Are you on Twitter at all, or is, is your program on Twitter or anything? <sighs> <laughs> I knew it was coming, man. I had to ask, but. I'm not a Twitter guy, and I always tell my guy to stop that Twitter, man. Don't get no teams, no type of bulletin board material because – I don't know. A lot of teams, they, they, they tend to think they can t- um, talk this game. And I like to tell them, I'm old school. We're we going we gonna to walk the walk. We're not going to talk the talk. You know, we sure. Uh, then we're going to make our pass and our helmets do all the talking. Okay? Uh, if somebody wants to follow you, I'll just give them your phone number, I guess. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you have a great evening, Coach. And, and like I said, I, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, just – you know, yeah, keep building that trophy case bigger, man. So you better have one hell of, heck of a carpenter that keeps building these things because <laughs> that thing's get, you're gonna need a room soon for all those trophies. Uh, thank you, Fish, and uh, thank you, uh, Chuck, Long, for having me, and I appreciate you guys having me tonight. And you all have a great evening. All right, man. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.